hi everybody welcome back to my channel and welcome to another new video thanks so much for joining me again for those of you that don't know me and this is your first time seeing my face my name is Dash I'm a medical student at King's College London and I talk about everything on here and on my Instagram page but mainly I talk about life as a medical student and mental health so in today's video I wanted to do a medical school true and false number one everyone is really clever and nobody admits to not understanding something I wouldn't say everyone is like really, really intelligent. I'd just say kind of medium intelligent. And I think, you know, just like at school, some people find it easier to sort of admit when they don't understand something and ask questions. Um, I think most people do feel pretty able to ask questions, especially on placement. You're not supposed to know everything. And yeah, when you're on placement, the best way to learn is by asking doctors and the other um, healthcare staff questions. Are the entrance exams really hard or is it slightly over exaggerated? So I imagine you mean the UCAT and the BMAT. Um, personally, I found them really, really difficult. Um, the UCAT, the style of questions, are, are not what comes naturally to me. Abstract reasoning and sort of finding patterns and shapes definitely isn't what I'm good at. The BMAT, again, um, it was like GCSE physics, chemistry, biology on steroids. And then you have an essay section at the end. And you also have like a problem solving section which all of it was really quite difficult so i wouldn't say they're over exaggerated no so that one's true for the first part they are really hard um the next one is med school is only for smart people false the most important thing in my eyes about a good medical student is all the sort of personality traits if you think about what you'd want from a doctor you'd want them to be empathetic to be a good listener um, to be caring of course you'd want them to have a little bit of knowledge um, but I don't think you need to be the most intelligent person in the world <laughs> look at me med students are stereotypically expected to behave in a certain way okay so how I interpret this is obviously medical school is basically a vocational degree as in pretty much, as long as you pass your exams, um, you will have a job at the end of it and you're kind of going into a profession. Um, also, you are obviously having clinical pla placements in a real workplace in the NHS. So I think there is a duty um, of professionalism that's needed if you're gonna be a medical student compared to some other degrees. So, you know, obviously, as long as you're following the law and being professional, making sure that you're treating patient information with confidentiality i think that's fine i don't think there's anything else you're supposed to do especially well if there is i'm not doing it everyone's super competitive this one made me smile this is definitely false i wouldn't say people are competitive at all not with each other um at least my friends you may get one or two but all my friends are really willing to help each other out like a lot more than ever at school I found like people are really willing to share notes to give each other advice I guess because there is quite a lot of content to learn and at times you will miss like a lecture or something so we're all very willing to help each other out at the end of the day the people um, in your year group and at med school are gonna be your colleagues um, and I'd much rather work alongside a really strong group of colleagues um, so yeah I, I say this is false you have to get straight A's all through college to get into med school false you don't have to I know there are some med schools where you can get A's and B's there are some med schools that have what's the word Basically, if you went to a low performing school or you live in a certain area, um, they will lower the entry grades, which I think is really, really good and really, really important because just because you've got three A's doesn't necessarily mean you'll be a good doctor. Just because you've got three B's doesn't mean that you'd be a bad doctor. So I think that's really important. Also, you could do a undergraduate degree first if you had less than A or B grades, and then you could apply for graduate entry medicine. So I think there are lots of routes around it. You don't have to get straight A's, but I suppose it's helpful. Um, a lot of medical schools, a lot of their entry requirements at A level will be three A's. I know mine was three A's, but I think GCSEs, it's less important. GCSEs, you don't need to have a stream of A stars and A's. There's been times where you have wanted to quit. Yes, true. I think that's a good thing. I think I've had a lot of doubts 
mainly in my first two and a bit years. There were lots of reasons why I had doubts. So mainly for money reasons. I just want to say that obviously the average salary of a doctor is a lot higher than the average salary in the UK. So it's not that I don't think it's a lot amount of money. It's the fact that I know that I could do another job and earn more money. I had to evaluate how important my salary and money actually is for me. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't important. I like living in a nice house. I like going out for meals. I also really want to give my children the best possible life when I get to that stage. So money is important to me. It's definitely not the only factor though, as I've worked out. I've doubted it for mental health reasons. I thought, won't this just make me really ill? Won't it make me really stressed out? I've doubted whether, you know, I would actually be a good doctor for imposter syndrome reasons. But I think these doubts are good. I think questioning whether you're doing the right thing is really important. It's easier than everyone says. Yes, true, 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 true. Yes, say it louder. This is one thing that really annoys me. And as you guys know, if you follow me on Instagram, I talk a lot about, it's not that hard. Different people might say it's really, really hard. Some people might say it's super easy. It comes down to sort of the expectation you put on yourself. If you're like, okay, I must get 80% of my exams. I must be in the top decile. I must do this, that, that then you're gonna find it harder. If you're like me and you're like, okay, I want to do reasonably well, I want to pass my exams and be a good doctor, but I also want to be happy and enjoy life, I might find it slightly easier. The way I explain it is, in terms of content, it's not too difficult. It's not like you're processing really confusing details, but there's a lot of content, so there's a lot to learn, but you're learning to be a junior doctor, and you're learning to be a junior doctor with colleagues and seniors to help you. You do not need to know everything. Yeah, so it's not that hard. Shh. Clinical years are better than pre-clinical years. Yes, absolutely. So I'm really lucky at King's, we started placement from year two. So we have one day a week in a physical health hospital, and one day a week in a GP. So although it's only two days a week, it's great. I hated first year. I'm sorry to say it, but I did. This was mainly when I had those doubts about wanting to do medicine. It was so sciencey, and there was no clinical placement, and oh, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. But stick through it and you'll get there. But yeah, clinical years, you know, that's why I went into medicine, to see patients, not to learn about cells and stuff. There are loads of extracurricular activities to choose from. This has got to be one of the best things about med school and I'm sure any university degree. The amount of societies is endless and if there's a society that you wanted to see but isn't there, you can create it. So let me tell you, so at King's we have, which is the same for most medical schools I believe, we have separate societies for the medical school. And also you can join the societies for the whole King's University. So at the medical school we have separate sports teams and this is really good because you get to meet older medics. Um, for example at the moment I'm choosing my placement hospitals for year four and year five so it's really nice having medics that have already been through that process so they can like tell you which ones they recommend, which ones they don't recommend. We have academic societies, so like you'll have a society for most specialties in medicine, so you'll have like a GP society, a surgery society, a ophthalmology society. Then you'll have like music, We the med school has a separate orchestra, the med school has a separate musical theatre society. Then in the main university societies there are like food and wine tasting. What else? Like a whole range of things, anything you can think of, literally. So yeah. True, 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 true. Everyone uses MacBooks in lectures. Mm, there's a lot of Apple devices about, I will give you that, but there's also a lot of iPads around and some people do use paper and pen. So in my first three years, I I was a MacBook ho. I used a MacBook, I'm a MacBook bitch. Um, I still am, never gonna change. Um, so anyway, I'd be like typing away on Word or Microsoft OneNote. Now I'm an iPad ho <laughs> because I find the physical process of writing it out helps me to remember things a lot better than frantically typing. So yeah, but not everyone has a MacBook or an Apple device. There are other computers available. <laughs> Med school is boring, false. Surely it's one of the most exciting degrees there is. You have to be extremely academic or you fall behind. Yes and no, false. Let's say false. 
um, because no, but let me explain why it kind of true. You don't have to be extremely academic, but I think one of the reasons I went wrong in first year is because I fell behind quite a lot. There were quite a lot of lectures in first year, so I'd recommend, even if you don't do it on the actual day because it's recorded, make sure you do it in the same week, otherwise it just all piles up and yeah, it's a nightmare. I would say being organized is more important than being extremely academic. It's time consuming compared to other degrees. I don't know because I've never done another degree, but I think probably true, probably true. The amount of hours, like contact hours you have, whether that be placement or lectures is more than other degrees. So let's go with true. The dating scene is dead. True? I'd say true. So basically, I was telling you about the medical school sports team. So you have separate medical schools sports night. People are just kissing each other and snogging each other and I don't even know what goes on. I don't I know of people dating at med school, but as you guys know, Alex is definitely not a medic, not a king's. He went to Manchester and he is a trainee solicitor now. But I'm sure you can make it work to medics at king's. <laughs> When you get shown examples of bruising, injuries and lectures, it's always on white skin. Up until this moment in time, yes, which is really wrong. Thanks to a guy at King's, Malone, he's really highlighted that and he's made Mind the Gap, which is amazing. So I hope when I go back to clinical lectures next year, there will be a lot more other colours of skin rather than just white because that's so important. Especially in London, like our patient population is a lot more diverse than just white skin. The workload is unmanageable. False. So one thing about medical school, at King's anyway, you don't have that many assignments. Like you hardly ever have essays. You hardly ever have work you have to submit. It's more just revising and trying to learn everything for exams. Medics are hardcore. So I remember before starting med school, everyone was like, med students are work hard, play hard. I think just like any degree, some people can be like, party animals and extroverts, some people can be introverts and not enjoy partying so I think especially in London there's a good mix of people, some people are more like party, other people are more like let's sit on the sofa, let's relax so yeah basically there's someone for everyone, there's friends for everyone. Um, Cool, so that's the end of the true and false game. I hope you found that interesting, fun. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye everybody.